welcome to the 13th lecture of the online lecture series on language, literature, and cultural studies organized by the English Language Teachers Interaction Forum, ELTIF. Now, Mr. Wilson, Secretary of ELTIF, will brief you about the program. ELTIF is a dynamic, proactive, and creative forum as a voluntary organization. The socially committed activists of ELTIF have been relentlessly working in the field of English language teaching and learning of the country, especially in rural and backward areas. A small teacher's fraternity established in the year 2002, following our great mission, empowering rural India through English language education. ELTIF has successfully conducted more than 500 programs so far for the teaching and learning community in various parts of Kerala, Mahi, Pondicherry, Tamil Nadu, and Maharashtra, etc. Through these programs, LTIF has been trying its best to cater the individual professional development needs of language teachers, the academic needs of language learners, and the language needs of common public. Other programs include social activities like English awareness for parents, rural women, Kudumbashri workers, and other semi-skilled laborers. Also, there were support programs for tribal children, which we conducted in the form of village English festivals. The Phoenix program conducted for the inmates of the central prison at Kannur was a very different experience. Altif has a vision, very specific and significant. We know India lives in her villages. Altif lives in and works for villages. And all our activities are designed upon this view. Apart from these kinds of language activities, every year, in association with the universities or institutions of higher education, we take up the responsibility of organizing an annual academic platform in the form of national seminar and workshop. We have been publishing a professional quarterly, Journal of LTIF which is exclusively devoted to the teaching and learning of English. When the pandemic COVID-19 COVID broke out first, when face-to-face -face teaching activities were banned inside and outside classrooms and everywhere, we could not remain idle. LTV soon shifted to online mode by arranging talks of eminent and experienced ELT personalities. And today's speech is the 13th of the series. Our founder, Dr. Paskaran Nair, who is still the president of LTIF, led us all together with his enlightening and inspiring mind with a wide vision and deep dedication. You need not be a teacher or a researcher to be part of LTIF. Any user or lover of English is welcome. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Even in the days of pan pandemic, uh, some days turn out to be really memorable. And for me, uh, it is a memorable day today. That's because today's speaker is Dr. Vijay Verma, formerly of University College Trivandrum. He's my teacher and also a colleague of the president of LTIF, Dr. Bhaskar Nair at Hindustan University, Chennai. It was Dr. Vijay Verma who evinced in me an interest in the Canterbury Tales 33 years ago. Today, he'll be speaking about a topic related to poetry, kinesthetics, and English rhythm. It's great to see and listen to you once again, sir. Now, Dr. Lena, an active member of the online committee of LTIP, will formally welcome and introduce Dr. Vijay Kumar to the audience. Uh, a warm, cheerful good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm really honored to take this opportunity to introduce our eminent yes. speaker, uh, Dr. K. Vijay Kumar, uh, he has been associating with LTIF uh, in the initial years. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Uh, Dr. K. Vijay Kumar uh, possesses 40 years of uh, expertise in the field of teaching, administration, research, and teacher training. He could claim 17 years of teaching experience at various government colleges mainly University College, Tiruvannathapuram, Kerala, 
20 years at various uh, professional universities and international training institutes in the UAE, Oman, and Kerala. And three years in the engineering universities in Tamil Nadu. He was the director of research and studies at Polyglot Institute in Muscat. Uh, he was professor and head of the Department of English and Humanities at Easy MIT Dubai Emirates College for Management and Information Technology. He was a professor and head of the Department of English and Liberal Arts at Shar Sharjah College, Sharjah. Uh, he was the professor, Department of English and Liberal Arts at Hindustan University, Padur, Chennai. He conducted more than 40 faculty development programs and organized around 30 seminars and workshops. He guided more than 85 MBA, 21 MPhil, and four PhD dissertations. In his personal collection, he has more than 15 uh, important publications, and he participated and presented several papers, delivered umpteen number of speeches in colleges, and have been a regular participant in TESOL Arabia and member of many academic bodies of universities. Moreover, he received the best teacher, teacher trainer award twice in UAE and twice in Muscat. And we welcome you, sir. So good evening and a warm welcome to you all. Our topic today is kinetics, kinetics and rhythm in English poetry. The session is purely pedagogical and there is nothing scholastic about what I'm saying. And it is about a simple technique that we can adopt in the classroom in order to get the attention of the students. I think most of our teachers are already doing it. So mine may be just an addition to that, nothing special. Let's go to rhythm and kinesics in English poetry. Rhythm contributes to the pleasure of the reader. It's the pulse of poetry. It creates an emotional and musical experience. But apart from these, rhythm serves an, eff an effective poetical device to capture the real physical action of the situation conceived in the words. There's been certain, there has been certain pedagogical functions too a rhythmic rendering keeps the listener listen quietly with interest. This helps the teacher get the attention and involvement of the students, facilitating both learning and teaching. Above all, rhythmic recitation helps the teacher teach grammar, especially pronunciation of words effectively in a context which the learner will not easily forget. The topic is explored in brief by looking at some of these elaborate poems of Gray, Tennyson, Keats, Wordsworth, Hopkins, and Auden. Elegy written in a country churchyard, I think most of us know. We have studied this poem. I'm just reading the poem. My first reading is a general reading. The second one is focusing on the kinesthetics or the kinesics. You all know the situation. The poet is sitting in a country churchyard and he is meditating on the fleeting nature of human life. It's evening. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lee. A plowman homeward plots his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. The so one teacher is teaching like this. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly over the lee. The plowman homeward plots his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now look at the situation. The curfew, it's a bell. Today it means something, something, something associated with that church bell, an order informing the people to stay at home. There's a curfew. In those days, the, there was there was curfew imposed by the government, especially 270 years back. The poem is written some 270 years back. So the curfew at that time was referring to the church bell, which is meant for the people around the churches to put out light. 
because there were there were reports of sporadic deaths resulted from a uh, fire from the heart from the heart of the living rooms of people so that's why the curfew was imposed so here the curfew just means the bell so the curfew tolls the bell of parting day the curfew means bell tolls me rings and knell also is another bell but something related to death funeral so knell also means symbolically means death the curfew means the bell rings the death of the day that means in the evening the priest will be calling some boys young boys and they'll be staying there they are ready to ring the bell and uh, because they are very young and they are very very excited to ring the bell all of them will be coming and clinging on to the bell and they ring the bell so the first line if we capture the the kinesics can go only like this the curfew tolls in a love parting day that the the poet is trying to capture the the kinesics the curfew tolls in a love parting day the curfew tolls in a love parting day now look at the the, the second especially the third line is suppose i'm reading like the plum and hermod plots is very way the plum and hermod plots is very way now the problem is with the kinesics the first one it is actually the ringing of the bell so naturally the line can go the curfew tolls in a parting day but the third line cannot go like the plum and hermod plots is very way if you fail to see the the kinesics then we'll be reading like the plum and hermod plots is very way it's not possible because the moment the bell is rung and the farmers around that church they hear the sound they stop work and they go back home they are very they are very tired so the light cannot go like the plum and hermod plots is very way and leave the darkness to darkness the leave the world to darkness and to me it's not possible so to capture the kinesics we have to read like the plum and hermod plots is very way the plum and hermod plots is very way Now you can adopt in your own way you can you can drag it with a very subtle use of you know, diphthongs and monophthongs the the point is capturing a monophthong k toll nel a a so far so by the subtle use of these things skillful use of these things is making it very 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 vibrant the curve it tolls nel a part but in the, the third one you can find a very skillful use of diphthong au oh, au oh, very a way as it were the plum home plots his very way and leaves the world to darkness and to me so first one is that we'll be getting the attention of the students the moment we are telling them that telling them that i am trying to capture the kinesis or there is uh, the the sorry the 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 boy is trying to capture the physical action also along the lines so we will get the attention at the same time we can teach them pronunciation especially the sounds the pure sounds pure vowels short and long vowels and the diphthongs pure vowel is k a uh, to o nel a and pa and then the uh plow diphthongs two vowels coming together au home it is not home it is home and in plowman and we are not saying plowman this plowman plowman home word potsies very 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 way way so we can capture the pronunciation it is not way it is way 
that is not day it is day etc so one thing is that we will be getting the attention of the students and they'll be very happy to listen to that and they will not forget the words these lines also because it is rhythmically rendered along with the kinesics so so that's uh for tom's story the first i'm not going to the other stanzas i'm after tom's story we are coming to the lotus eaters lord tennyson first i'll read the poem and then i'll come back for this kind of six courage he said and pointed toward the land this mounding way will roll us over soon in the afternoon they came into a land in which it seemed always afternoon all round the coast the languid air did zoon breathing like one that hath a weary dream full faced above the valley stood the moon and like a downward smoke slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall it seemed a land of streams some like a downward smoke slow dropping wheels of thinness long did go and some through wavering lights and shadows broke rolling a slumber sheet up below sheet of foam below right a land where all things always seem the same all round the keel with faces pale dark faces pale against a rosy flame the mild eyed melancholy lotus it is came branches they bore of that enchanted stem laden with flower and fruit where of they came is it right we're coming back to tennis courage he said and pointed to pointed to the land so now we should know the background the story is taken from homer's odyssey odysseus and his mariners are in the midst of their 10 year old journey home after the battle of troy after sailing for months on end odysseus gets a glimpse of a stretch of land and so excited he encourages his men telling them to have courage in the face of the mighty waves that zeus the god of sky and thunder has sent them and asks the mariners to sail slow as the mounting waves would roll them to shore in this land his mariners are fed with lotus plants of fruits and become mesmerized by the beauty of the land in which they have embarked a land of valleys no e mountains cliffs and streams a land where all things always seem the same that is the the background ulysses is coming back after 10 years on the sea and 10 years in the land fighting to retrieve helen from troy so they they destroy troy and they're coming back and for months on end they couldn't see any stretch of land but all on a sudden they see some land a stretch of land ulysses or odysseus tells all his mariners to stop sailing because he wants to embark in that island that's the situation no courage he said and pointed toward the land pros look at the second line in inventory commas also this mounting wave will roll us forward soon if we are just reading like this mounting wave will roll us forward soon we are not we are not capturing the kinesics because the situation is he's telling the mariners to stop sailing why was there is no need for ring a paddling us because this mounting wave will roll us forward soon this mounting wave will roll us forward so in the afternoon they came into land in which it seemed always afternoon in the afternoon they came into a land in which it seemed always afternoon now look at the uh, next line all round the coast the languid air did zoon breathing like one that hath a weary dream he is talking about the mounting wave he is talking about the mounting waves the waves the movement of the waves which will take the take the ship to shoreward and now look at the next all round the coast languid air did zoon breathing like one that have a weary dream all round the coast the languid air languid means slow moving so he's capturing the kinesics of the slow moving air 
All round the coast, the languid air did zoom, breathing like one that hath a weary dream. So in the sec in these lines, he's trying to capture the the movement, slow movement of the air. All round the coast, the languid air did zoom, breathing like one that hath a weary dream. Next. Full faced above the valley stood the moon and like a downward smoke. Full faced above the so it's a land of streams. Full faced above the valley stood the moon and like a downward smoke, the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fold it seem. Look at the last of Arcana 6. Full faced above the valley stood the moon. A beautiful scenery seen. And like a downward smoke. An image of a slender stream, a downward smoke, it looks like a downward smoke. And like a downward smoke, the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall the stream. Actually, the, he's capturing the movement of the waterfall, the water falling from the cliff, along the cliff to fall on a plain a rock, maybe a rock or a plain ground, again falling, again falling again falling like that so full faced above the valley stood the moon like a downward smoke the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall it seemed the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall it seemed 30 30 30 power so full faced above the valley stood the moon like a downward smoke the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall it seemed so it is going down again, capturing the kinesics in the fall of that spring. A land of streams, some like a downward smoke, slow dropping veils of thinness, long did go. Again, the movement of the, uh, the falling movement of water, like a downward smoke, slow dropping veils of thinness, long did go. And some through wavering lights and shadows broke. Rolling a slumber sheet of foam below. A land where all things all 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 things always seem the same. And round about the keel with faces, pale dark faces, pale against the rosy flame, the mild eyed melancholy lotus eat came. Branches, branches they bore of that and giant stem laden with flower and fruit. So they came, they landed in that place. Where a land where all things always seem the same. And now, after eating the lotus plant or lotus fruit of that land, they are intoxicated and round about the keel with faces, pale the dark faces, pale like against a rosy flame, the mild eyed melancholy lotus eat is came. And after that, they cut the branches of the trees of the lotus land and they are dancing branches they bore of that in giant stem laden with flower and fruit branches they bore of that in giant stem laden with flower and fruit they are dancing they're carrying the the branches of that tree lotus and they are dancing they're so intoxicated they, they don't want to go back home so they're very happy to be here. So branches they bore of that in giant stem laden with flower and fruit. So that is a kind of six. Now we are coming to Keats. You know that uh, the, this is, I think, one of the maturest poems in English literature, mature in its structure and its content. So let me read the poem first and then come to the kindness etc and the critics are uni unanimous in declaring autumn to autumn as one of the most perfect poems in the english language some critics have stated that the poem is flawless in structure texture tone and rhythm and also that to autumn is the only perfect poem that keats ever wrote now look at the poem for its kinesics. So he's describing the autumn season. 
and he is making comparison between the autumn season and at the end he says that there is no difference between autumn season and the spring season look at the poem season of mist and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wind the round that the chips run to bend with apples the most coty trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core next stands sir who has not seen the after mid the store sometimes whoever seeks a broad may find the sitting careless on a granary floor the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind or on a half freed far or sound asleep draws the fumes of poppies while they hook spares the neck swath and all its twine flowers and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady the laden head across a brew or by your side a press with patient look the watches the last oozing hours by hours third stanza the final stanza where are the songs of spring i where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while bad clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy hue then in a wild full wail full choir the small nats mourn along the river salus born a laughter singing as a light wind leaves or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly barn and hedge crickets sing and now with the trouble soft the red breast whistles from a garden craft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies let me go to the first one season of miss and mel of fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wind the round that the chips runs describing how that the wine tree is creeping around the thatched eaves of that country so that that creeping uh wine trees are captured by that rhythm season of mist and mel of fruitfulness close bosom friend the maturing some conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wind the round the thatches run fruit the wind the round the thatches run the fruit that wind the round the thatches run because it is that the creeping going round of that you know action is being captured by the 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 rhythmic patterns of the line and to bend with the apples and most coty trees and fill all fruit ripeness to the core so that is the season of miss and mellow fruitfulness that is the beauty of the season and now he is identifying the season and is a personification the season has been personified and uh, just like uh, if somebody wants to land in london and want to identify the time or the or the, the the season he can easily identify the the season by looking at these ladies who are at work the profession that is being carried on at that time so who has not seen the after mid the store sometimes who ever seeks a broad may find the the lady just like ladies sitting careless on a granary floor so the first one lady first one is is being personified as lady sitting careless on a on a granary floor the kind of sex is coming next thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind how soft to lift it soft lifted by the winnowing wind the wind is coming from the winnowing the ladies are making you know uh, they are winnowing they are churning the the chaff from the corns so a wind is coming from that and that soft wind is the wind is soft lifting the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind and on a half free for a sound it sleep draws the fumes of poppies while the other ladies the, the other set of ladies they are sound asleep 
a half ripe fur sound asleep draws with the fumes of poppies while the hook spares the next fire and all its twin flowers and the third one is a gleaner and she is keeping the sheaves of corn on her head and she has to cross a brook the while cross in order to cross a brook she has to steady her head otherwise she may fall so look at that sometimes like a gleaner the does the does keep steady the laden head across a brook she is steadying her laden loaded head across a brook in order to balance otherwise she may fall the steadying her laden head action so it sometimes like a gleaner the does keep steady the laden head across a brook the third one is a cider presser uh, she is making apple juice a by a cider press with patient look thou watches the last oozings hours by hours patient look kind of six also you know related to the facial expressions body language also action with the patient look thou watches the last oozings hours by hours so the 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 season is being personified in terms of the occupations of the time some ladies are you know care sitting careless on a granary floor the sitting careless on a granary floor they have the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind the other ladies are sound asleep drowsed with the fumes of poppies and the the third one is a lady is a gleaner who is keeping a uh, sheaf of corn on her head and she's she's trying to cross a brew and she's steadying her laden head so like a gleaner thou dost keep steady the laden head across a brew on by a side a press with a patient look patient look the watches the last oozings hours by hours and coming to the last part of john keats so it is the third part it is most uh, most of the people think that it's autobiographical so the tone is low sad where the song spring is asking At the same time he's giving a solace to the season where the songs of spring your sister where where is she i where are they think not of them don't worry about her thou has thy music too you autumn season you have your music too now while bad clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy hue while bad clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy hue patchy clouds are coming and it is falling on the soft dying day it is falling on the stubble plains the corns are cut and the stubs the, the, the only the stumps remain so the the acres of you know stubble plains the stumps of corns are there and the bar the patchy clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy color while well, bad clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with the rosy hue then in a wailful choir the small nets mourn among the river swallows born a loft a singing as the light wind leaves and dies at that time the small gnats they are sitting on the river sallows the sallow is a tree from which we make a cricket bats sallows so you can easily bend down and come up that kind of tree so the the gnats are sitting on that and it is a dancing sequence the gnats are going down along with the swallow when the wind is very light and the when the wind dies it will be coming back aloft so born aloft singing as the light will lifts or dies 
So within in a wailful choir, the small lads born among the river's fellows born aloft, or singing as the light wind lifts or dies. Born aloft, the singing as the light wind lifts or dies. A kind of you know dancing sequence. It goes up and come down along with the wind. Now the full grown lambs loud bleat from a hilly bone. Heads cricket sing and now with truffles of the red breast. The red breast whistle from a garden craft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. Gathering swallows twitter in the skies. And that gather the, the, again the movement, the kind of gathering the swallows, the quick moving birds, small birds, the gathering thousands and the twitter, the make streaking noise, twitter in the skies, gathering swallows, twitter in the skies. So again, kind of six. So the poem is over. Now we are coming to resolution and independence. William Wordsworth. We know that all the poems are very simple poems. I'm just selecting one first stanza. You know the, the background. It's a real encounter. That's what the poet claims with an old man and his body is bent double. He's, he has been found. The poet finds him in a moor and he's searching for leeches for a living. So uh, leech gatherer is also uh, a subtitle, uh, the title of this poem, Resolution and Independence or Leech Gatherer. So he come across he meets with him and he asks him why this uh, this old man is there at this inclement weather. It's a very bad weather and it is going to rain sometimes and there may be a problem for him and but he doesn't mind and he stays back there going on collecting leeches for a living. So the poet why comes back home and is so impressed day? by the resolution, the determination of the man to stay back and collect leeches for a living. And uh, he's so happy for the man because of his independent way of life. That's the situation. Now we are coming to the first stanza of the poem. There's a roaring in the wind all night. There's a roaring in the wind all night. There's a roaring in the wind all night. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. But now, but now the sun is rising calm and bright. The birds are singing in the distant woods. Or his own sweet voice has talked of brutes. Jay makes answer as the magpie chatters. And all the air is filled with pleasant noise of waters. There's a roaring in the wind all night. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. Within two lines, the background is the the the. Yesterday's or yesterday's background is over. There's a roaring in the wind all night. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. And now the sun is rising calm and bright. There's a roaring in the wind all night. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. But now the sun is rising calm and bright. The birds are singing in the distant woods. Or his own sweet voice, the stock the brutes. The jay makes answer as the magpie chatters. And all the air is filled with pleasant noise of waters. So the first line is a roaring in the wind, all night, roar sound, capturing the heavy uh, uh, rain uh, earlier night, yesterday night. There's a roaring in the wind all night. The rain came heavily and fell in. The rain came heavily and fell in floods. But now the sun is rising calm and bright. The birds are swinging in the distant woods. 
over his own sweet voice has talked the brutes, the JMX answer as the magpie chatters, and all the air is filled with plus and noise of waters. So capturing the kindness fish, the rain came heavily and fell in floods. And now the sun is rising calm and bright, two types of kindness fish. And all the air is filled with pleasant noise of waters. That is resolution and independence. Now we are coming to the window, uh, Gerald Manley Hopkins. The poet gets a glimpse of a bird, a falcon. The falcon is. The, the, it's a bird which has a rare ability to hover in the sky for a long time. The poet describes how he saw or caught one of these birds in the midst of its hovering. The bird strikes the poet as the darling, the minion of the morning, the crown prince or the dauphin of the kingdom of daylight, drawn by a dappled colors of dawn. He rides the air as if it were on a horseback moving with a steady control, like a rider whose hold on the rain is full. In the poet's imagination, the windower sits high and proud. Windower is a kestrel, it is a bird like falcon. Its motion is controlled and suspended in an ecstatic moment of concentrated energy. Then the next moment, the bird is off again like an ice skater balancing forces as he makes a turn. At that moment, the poet feels for the bird, moved by its own aerodynamism. The poet admires the craftsmanship of God, the Almighty, for creating such a wonderful bird with such a stunning performance. That is a background. The poet is trying to capture the aerodynamism of the bird. And he is, he would like to admire God, the Almighty, for creating such a bird with its stunning performance. That's the situation. Now, this is the poem which is known for its sprung rhythm. There's a lot of beats, quick, quick section of beats. Sometimes confusing also. Sometimes which one is uh, adjective, which one is noun, we don't know. But what he would like to capture is the dynamism of the bird. So I'll read the whole lot is going at one stretch. I caught this morning's morning's minion kingdom, daylight's dolphin, dappled dawn, drawn falcon in his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady air and striding high there, how he rung upon the rain of a wimbling wing in his ecstasy, then off, off, forth on swing, as a skate's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend, the hurl and gliding rebuff the big wind. My heart in hiding stood for a bird, the achieve of the mastery of the thing. The whole poem is about the aerodynamics of the bird. The bird is a kestrel, it's a falcon. It can hover in the, in the, in the sky for a long time. In the same position, it can hover for a long time. And then it can swerve and turn and move fast and go up sometimes. So that maneuverability, that aerodynamism was, impress was so impressive that the poet feels for that bird. And he admires God who made this bird. I'll read again. I caught this morning's morning's minion. Minion means darling. I caught this morning. I, I, have a, I, have, uh, I had a glimpse of this bird. I saw this bird. Minion, kingdom of Dele's dolphin is a dolphin, is a crown prince of dappled drawn dawn falcon. In the dawn is a dappled drawn falcon, beautifully colored falcon in his riding. It is hovering. He saw he, the, the, the bird hovering in the sky for a long time. In the same time, it goes on hovering for a long time. Of the rolling level underneath them, steady air and striding. Hi there, how hi there, how he rung upon the rain of a wimbling wing. His wings are just like you know, he 
the it's just like he sits uh just like on a horse back and it is moving and he is in his ecstasy so ecstatic that is moving then it turns off off on swing as a skates heel as a heel effect skater it moves swift smooth on a bow bend and hurl and gliding and it is trying to 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 challenge the wind also the big wind is coming it is trying to challenge it it is maneuvering manipulating the wind also it is moving fast that's the situation so this maneuverability this aerodynamics was so impressive for the poet so he heart my heart in hiding stood for a bird the chew of the mastery of the thing i'll read once again the aerodynamics of the bird so that is kind of six i cut this morning's morning's minion kingdom dales dolphin down dapple dawn drawn falcon in his riding of the rolling level underneath him steady air and striding high there how he rang upon the rein of a wimbling wing in his ecstasy then off off forth on swing as a skate's heel smooth sweet smooth on a bow bend the hurling gliding rebuff the big wind the whole thing should go together then only will be able to capture the aerodynamism the the the, the maneuverability and the manipulation of that bird then only will be able to capture the kind of six and right if you if you read like this and you tell them that i'm trying to capture the kind of six or the capture the aerodynamics but then only the, the the students will be uh listening to us otherwise it is a boring if i read like this they will not understand it i caught this morning morning's minion king of dales dolphin double down drawn falcon in his riding of the rolling level underneath him steady etc is totally boring so after capturing the kinesics then come back to it again read the kinesics for them and they will understand then my heart in hiding stood for a bird the chief of the mastery of the thing so next we are coming to the last one wh orden night mail i'll read the poem it's a long poem i have taken only a few lines from that anyway i'll read the whole lines and then i will come back you should know the background he is talking about a train which is called a night mail which carries only uh, only the, the the postal articles letters and other post articles is bring postal orders checks and all those things it's a very simple poem nursery rhyme so he's capturing the movement of the tree uh, first i'll read without any any, any kind of six this is a night mail crossing the border bringing the check and the postal order letters for letters for the rich letters for the poor the shop at the corner the girl next door pulling a beat to a steady climb the gardens against her but she some time past cotton grass and modern border shoveling wasting over her shoulder snorting as snorting noisily as she passes silent miles of wind and grasses there's for thanks there's a bang there's a joy from girl and boy receipted bills and invitation to inspect new stock or visit relations applications for situations timid lovers declarations gossip goes in small nation new circumstantial new financial letters as holiday slaps and large and letters as the faces crawled on the margin letters from uncle cousins and aunts letters to scotland from the south of france letters of condolences to highlands and lowlands written on paper of every hue the pink the white the white the, the white the blue the chatty the catty the boring the dory in the cold official and hearts of boring clever stupid short and long and typed and printed and the spelt all wrong that's a boy you know i've taken only one third of the poem uh half of the poem for the sake of uh, capturing the kind of thing the whole poem is having that kind of six because the poet is trying to capture the movement of the train on the track on the rail because it's a uh steam engine so you know how the steam engine is chuk, 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 chuk. it goes on like that so the poet is trying to capture that kind of kinesis so the beginning is slow because the train will be starting like that so this is night mail crossing the border bringing the check and the postal or initiating the train 
disease night mail crossing the border bringing the check and the postal order little is for the rich little is for the poor the shop at the corner the girl next door pulling a beto steady climb it is now it is going up up so pulling a beto steady climb the dead in second sir but she's on time pass cotton grass and mullen and boulder shoveling white steam over her shoulder pass cotton grass and mullen and boulder shoveling white steam over her shoulder snorting noise now she's taking a bend a uh, snorting noisily as she passes silent miles of wind bent grasses she is taking a turn and because she is taking a turn she is snorting she is snorting making very heavy heavy sound it is sound of animals so snorting noisily as she passes silent miles of wind bent grasses now it is steady now it is going fast Lots of thanks, lots of banks, lots of joy from gallant boy. Received bills and invitation to inspect new stock or visit relations. Application for situation, timid lover's declaration, gossip, gossip from all nations. New circumstantial, new financial with the holiday snaps to enlarge in. Lots of the faces tall on the margin. Lots of uncles, cousins, and aunts. This is Scotland from the south of France. This is Continents to Highlands and Lowlands. Written on paper, a very hue. The pink, the violet, the white and blue. The chatty, the catty, the boring, the doring. The cold and the fish and the hearts are pouring. Clever, stupid, short and long. Typed and printed and spelt all wrong. Coming back to the second one. Lots of thanks. Lots of bang. Lots of joy. I can also read like these. Lots of thanks. Lots of bang. Lots of joy from girl and boy. Receipted bills and invitations to inspect new stock of visit relations, applications for situations and timid lovers declaration. Gossip, gossip from all nation, new circumstance, new financial sector. I can read, but I may not be able to capture the kindness ex that is expected from that line. So I have to go fast because now the the train is very steady and moving fast. Lots of thanks, lots of bangs, lots of joy from girl and boy. Lots of bills and invitations. Inspect please talk of situations, applications for situation, timid lovers, declarations. Gossip, gossip from all nations. Get circumstantial, it's financial. There's holiday snaps and origin. Let us faces cloud on the margin. Let us from uncles, cousins and aunts. There's a continent from the south of France. There's a continent to Highland Lowlands. It's written on a paper of every hue, the pink, the violet. So now it is very heavy, very, very fast. The train is moving fast. The train is going from England to Scotland. It is moving fast. The the the, the pink, the wild, the white and blue, the chatty, the catty, the boring, the doring, the cold and the fragile, and how it's pouring. Clever, stupid, short and long. The typed and printed and the spelt all wrong. So, right, that is the end of our kindness weeks. Now we'll have a Q&A session. I request Dr. Lena to moderate the session. Sir, uh, uh, very honest, excellent, enjoyable and effective presentation, sir. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, one of our participants, uh, he asked one question. Uh, how to identify kinesthetics while reading a, a poem? No, actually, I don't know all these things. When I started teaching, this happened long back in in. the malabar colleges uh, patambi patambi government college there were around uh, some 120 students in the classroom and all the students will be there in the university college half of the students may not be there so we don't have any problem there 120 students will be in the class sometimes more students will be coming and joining us so the only way to capture their attention is to give some sort of rhythm that is what i thought i never knew this uh, the kind of six and all those things i never knew so slowly Uh, i started giving some kind of rhythm to this and then i found that there is some sort of you know movement also the poet is trying skillfully but subtly he is manipulating the 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 vowels in such a way that it goes fast and slow for example in the first poem you know that the curve is towards nel pad g etc and the next one is that uh, he is using very subtly he is using the uh, the two two vowels together so the plow so i thought that okay then but there may be the point may be doing it 
may not be deliberate they have become great poets because of this they have the skill to do that so slowly whenever the idea was not to 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 teach them or to to give kind of aesthetics to that the idea was to get the attention of the students that is what i thought so that's slowly slowly i then found that okay it's very interesting and uh, we will will give some sort of kind of aesthetic effect to the poems that's how it happened so if you look at the 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 meaning of or the situation of that uh poem then you can slowly give this kinds of you know kind of aesthetic effect in terms of rhythm this is only a pedagogical technique that i adopted personally in the classroom it has nothing to do with scholarship no no nothing i did it probably you know, many years back after that you know i went for research and after research i never touched on these uh poems i did only for no, i i taught poetry for two or three years that's all uh sir miss meenakshi uh, she mm. asked one question that uh, uh, please give her some tips to use it in our class how to make oh. practical use of this rhythm and kindness no first you have to control your voice that's the first thing train yeah, your yeah, voice definitely. in such a way otherwise you know the breath is not coming it's not easy you have to practice it sometimes several times you have to practice it otherwise the breath will be if you are you know stopping the breath in the middle the whole rhythm is gone so that's the problem so slowly it may not be coming all at a sudden you have to you know to you know, practice it for some time probably for months sometimes for years and also don't be under the impression that all the poems will be having kinesics no the modern poems may not be having this kinesics no modern poems means in poems of you know aids and uh, tersility you may find but the most modern poems may not be for example in the in the poems of uh, uh, aids wb aids poem the uh, second coming there it starts like that turning and turning in the widening gyre it's clear so you can capture you can use a voice then only it will be getting turning and turning in the widening gyre the falcon cannot hear the falcon uh, something like that raise your voice Uh, idea for oh, my please understand my idea was to capture the attention of the students and then teach it's easy for them otherwise they will not listen because 120 students and 2 hours together how can i manage so sir uh, hopkins window was how can we identify that uh, aerodynamism of that bird you superbly you explained and uh, recited that uh, aerodynamism and how the teachers yeah. Of, uh, yeah that's why it is it's a difficult point people think but if we are yeah. instilling it with uh, with kind of you know kinesics uh, kinesics then people will, students will understand otherwise they, they won't understand yeah yeah and yeah. then slowly you can come to the lines and words that is easy, easy for them otherwise they don't find any, any any meaning in these things because how can you find meanings in the, unless you know it is followed by kinesics so a wonderful session amazing a super rendition of for your uh, poem sir thank you so much thank you very much we have successfully come to the end of the 13th lecture organized by eltu as a part of its lecture series it is indeed a privilege and pleasure for me to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of eltu today we were really fortunate to have dr k vijay kumar with us I would like to extend our deeper sense of gratitude on the behalf of Eltif to Dr. K. Vijay Kumar for such an interesting lecture on the topic kinesthetics and English rhythm. His lecture that focused on rhythm in poetry by looking at the evergreen poems of Gray, Tennyson, Keats, Wordsworth, Hawkins, Auden, etc., was really enlightening. It was interesting to see that the rhythm in poetry helps the learner to learn. grammar pronunciation and thus the language effectively thank you very much sir for taking us through the musicality of poetry which is an eff- effective medium in teaching poetry which is really helpful for us the leadership and dedication of professor bhaskaran nayar is the driving force behind this organization his indomitable spirit and his constant support and guidance always inspire us I would like to thank him for his constant support and encouragement. Dr. C. Praveen is the coordinator of the online lecture series. Thank you, sir, for effectively coordinating this lecture series by focusing even on the minute details and supporting us. 
I would also like to thank the committee members, Dr. A. C. Srihari, Dr. Kartika V. K., Mr. P. Mohanan, Mr. Walson Panoli, Dr. A. K. Lena, Mrs. Vinija, Dr. Sajida Sultana, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Lakshmi Suresh, uh, for uh, working together to make the program successful. And I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the participants for your active participation and interaction. We expect your cooperation in the future endeavors. And once again, I would like to thank you all for the successful conduct of the program. Thank you.